Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and to part two of this layout design video. Part one was released a few days ago, and you can find it either in my layout design playlist or by clicking on the link in the description below. In part one, I had the whole layout pretty much roughed in. In this part, I'm going to finish the design. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. So now with the staging yard pretty much done, let's go back to the main level. This drawing may look very similar to one that I showed you a while ago. As I mentioned earlier, we elected to go with both the ships in the inner harbour. And although previously I had arranged for most of the harbour basin to be a drop flap for access, now with two ships in there, they had to be close together. So the access hatch is now the roof of a large warehouse. And it's probably easier that way anyway, because it saves a need for disguising the lines around the edge of the water. I wasn't too concerned about it, figuring that a dark line of algae just above the water level would disguise it, and the front seam across the harbour would be a few inches behind the bridge, where it would be completely hidden from normal viewing angles. But anyway, with the access hatch being in a warehouse, all those problems go away and it's much easier. It's probably better as well. Here is the first drawing of the middle level with most of the complex areas hooked up properly with scale size turnouts. There have been a few minor adjustments in the engine terminal and to the west end approaches to the passenger terminal. And I found a way of getting this junction at this end to work. Basically, we have a double crossover in the middle with two more double slips and additional crossovers in all four corners allowing universal connection from any entrance to any exit. It doesn't have the benefit of parallel routes for simultaneous movements, but that was a luxury we just were not going to be able to get at this end. I have managed to keep that option open at the other end, however, since that is a far more prototypical way of laying out steam area passenger terminals. This next plan has only changed slightly. I was adjusting bench work and our location slightly to get the very best use of the space in the room. And with a slight adjustment in this corner, I was able to get a proper yard lead for the freight tracks, as well as two industrial spurs that would not have been possible previously. This drawing has all the subsidiary tracks put back in, the Railway Express Agency, the commissary, the post office tracks, several industries, both in this corner down here and along behind the passenger terminal. Basically what this is doing is filling up every available corner just to show the client what is possible in the space. And I always provide notes at this point in the process that we can trim it back later if he wants to. This is fitting in as much operational potential as possible and it's up to the client to decide how much of it he wants. Bearing in mind that it's a simple matter to delete tracks but it can be a lot more difficult or even impossible to add in additional spurs that were never planned for. Also at this time, I'm starting to fill in a lot of city areas and giving some thought as to which of his structure kits will go where. Now, since all my viewers are going to have different structure kits and different requirements, that discussion is probably irrelevant here, so I'll skip it. Here is the upper level brought to the same stage with all the tracks filled in with proper turnouts. It was while I was drawing the mine that I realized that we had the option of extending the mine branch around the outside of it through the backdrop and to a single staging track over the helix. It's necessary to bend it round an S-bend, but it still works and we can get a good length train in there. That increases the operational potential and allows the mine branch to have an extra train on it, serving one or more additional off-stage mines. In addition to the small interchange yard, I added a few potential industrial spurs. And I mentioned at this point the possibility of adding a short line at this point, not only would that give him even more operational potential, but it would use up structures that didn't otherwise have any use. So he asked me to draw that. And here is what I came up with for him. It uses his passenger depot and his two stall engine house and the last of his bridges. And there is a huge additional operational potential on this level with just slight extra complexity. So now with all the track laid out properly, it's time to start filling in the scenery. I started at the bottom, 
I figure on the bottom level, less is more. So I didn't want to squeeze in too many features. I've still got a deep river valley, a short curved trestle near the door. One of the first scenes that you'll see as you come in. Since this area around here is much bigger than it needs to be for the control cabinet, I showed part of the space used for displaying models. There's room for more display cases above the upper level staging. Here is the main level in all its glory. Note the dummy tracks on this side of the harbour. There is no sensible way of reaching them and connecting them up with the rest of the railroad. But since this area represents a big city, it probably has more than one railroad in it. So we're assuming that this half of the harbour is connected up and switched by a different railroad. So it leaves a couple of dummy tracks for him to stage cars in the process of being unloaded and things like that. I added some barge traffic along the narrow section at the front. And I'm thinking this area here is a good spot for the harbour pilot station. I filled the industries in in this corner, showing industries that require a good variety of car types. And one track extends under the bridge representing another industry the other side of the bridge. And then the layover tracks along the back are hidden mostly within a large warehouse that runs several feet along the backdrop and some smaller city buildings at the end of it. And by shortening the steel viaduct, I was able to find a location for the client's concrete underpass. And here is the upper deck with all the scenery suggestions drawn in. I suggested making one of the industries a pulpwood loading spur, because pulpwood loads are really cool. And I've got one of the industries with an open front where you can see inside. I think I did that on the main level in a couple of places as well, although I forgot to point it out. And then there's plenty of room for a large display cabinet over the staging yard at this end so the client can display all the models that don't fit on the railroad. Here is a clean view of the staging level with all the annotations removed. Feel free to pause it if you want to take a longer look. Here is the middle level, again with all the annotations removed. Here's that other industry I told you about with the open front, just the front wall and loading dock of a warehouse, allowing for a really cool view of the inside. And here is the upper deck without the annotations. So I guess that is all for this design. So I will sign off now and I hope to see you back next time. In the meantime, thanks for watching and bye for now.